Any lawyer would call this a terrible idea. No avionics firm would encourage it either. But pilots who fly with GPS-derived synthetic vision can't help but wonder. If you faced an aerial emergency in which you absolutely had to land without the ability to see beyond the instrument panel, could you do it using synthetic vision alone? To find out, I papered over the canopy of this TB-30 Epsilon. When owner Mike Fellucci strapped in and closed the lid, his world got really small. A 10-inch Garmin G3X was his only means of aviating and navigating. I taxied from the back seat, lined up with the runway, and handed the controls over to Mike for a simulated 0-0 takeoff. Hey, I have the airplane and everything is go. Here we go. We flew to Martinsburg, West Virginia, where a massive 8,800-foot runway gave us a huge target. Mike used synthetic vision to line up with runway 26 and descended to about 50 feet above the ground. When he started to round out, however, things got dicey. Like this one to go around. Okay, we're on the go. We flew back out for another try, and this time Mike tuned the ILS and flew through the green highway in the sky boxes that provided vertical guidance. This time, the transition went better. He flew all the way to the runway surface and touched down long and left of center. It wasn't pretty, but he managed to keep the airplane on the 150 foot wide runway. A third and final effort had almost exactly the same result. It was time to release Mike from his cave and let him land normally. The takeaway from all this? Synthetic vision is a wonderful safety tool that vastly expands pilot situational awareness, but it's no substitute for actually being able to see the runway. As good as synthetic vision is, it's not enough to rely on for landings. Not yet, anyway. Dave Hirschman, AOPA Live.